This is Star Talk. Susan Minob from Facebook asks, how sure are we about our map of our galaxy and the universe in general? Could our tools, techniques be mapping an illusion and that the universe is much smaller or larger than we've calculated? Mm. Okay. Your show is called Space Time. Yeah. Right? So why don't you take Is everything one? we Let know me... based on lies? I mean, it, 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 <laughs> it could just be that there's a giant dome that's painted kind of like the Wizard of Oz set. Right. And Are we in a super complicated <laughs> Truman show? I, th I think the, the closest thing to that is the idea of the holographic universe where you have this vastly distant shell that's a hologram and that our three dimensions are projected from two. Uh, Highly, highly hypothetical. I'm even going to say theoretical. Uh, so, the, so, all right. How do we how do we measure this stuff? With with many scientists working independently, making measurements independently, and, and getting agreed upon results. Um, in, in the case of the map of our universe, is pointing multiple different telescopes at, at distant galaxies and um, and you know ca basically calculating redshifts and uh, so but, would, but also getting distances by different independent methods. So I would add that we use a regular telescope that is sensitive to visible light, mm -hmm. and that's the extension of our retina, mm -hmm. and we see a galaxy there. Mm -hmm. Now somebody else invents an infrared telescope, or a microwave telescope, or a radio telescope, and we scan the sky, we find the same object, but now emitting in these other bands. Mm -hmm. So this gives us confidence that the object is real, that it's actually there, and some interesting things are happening mm. in it. Mm. And that it's not, and then, like, as you were saying, before I interrupted you, as you that should. you can get the distance to this object by multiple ways. Mm. They're not standard ways you would measure distances on Earth. On Earth, you can pace out the distance, you could get a little tape measure, you can use now one of these... Um, uh, like a wheel? La la laser thingy. Laser, thingy, laser, yeah. laser thingy. Yes. That, and so there are multiple ways. If you get the same answer from all those ways, and all those ways are completely different from mm. one another, mm. you have confidence you have the right distance to the object. Yeah. And so, yeah, so this you combine all of these factors, we think the, the universe is real. And it is what we measure it to be. Mm. But you can get, take a deeper philosophical point that there is no reality beyond the measurement. The measurement becomes the reality of the universe that we describe. So to say it really is this other thing, you're just not measuring it to be. So I'll say, how will you ever know that it's this other thing? Well, I don't know. The question wouldn't be that it's another thing. It's just that we are wrong. Well, how, how would you know that we are there's so so right. we learn in quantum physics you learn in quantum physics <laughs> the, the, the the reality of the world only makes sense through the measurement right in a sense yeah, you, yeah in a sense so yeah, you cannot right. it's, it doesn't but mean anything I, to talk about a world that is Outside of a measurement, so that's what, then you have that's, no, what, that's what Niels Bohr you have no would say. Access to it. I think, okay, I, th I think. I think others. I think you know. For example, David Bohm and and and, and realists would would argue otherwise. I think the important thing is not to confuse though the idea that the you know we have an, a subjective experience of the universe, and that that subjective experience isn't the universe. It's a different thing to the actual universe. And um, but nonetheless, the universe remains consistent. Our subjective experience of the universe matches other people's subjective experience. We can all make measurements that agree with each other. And that gives us confidence that there is something objectively real out there, even if we can't say exactly what it is. And I would add to that, but I'll tie a bow on it, mm -hmm. that I look at something and I say, okay, that looks red to me. Well, am I on drugs or not? Okay, so, that, you, so that'd be a you? subjective reality. <laughs> so then you devise an experiment. So we have an apparatus that measures wavelengths of light, and you've already calibrated it to that this wavelength is a red over here. So now you come to this, and the machine measures red as well. Is so the machine on drugs? <laughs> you're going to teach, teach the machine likely. what red means yeah. first. We yeah. have to teach it over here what red is. And then we look at this thing that I'm looking at, and so now we both query the machine, what color is this? And the machine gives us the same answer. So I've removed my own brain from this experiment, and I'm getting the same answer. Mm -hmm. So... To a limit, our subjective experience is reality, but we know the limits of our subjective mm. experience. And the whole point of science is to, is to probe reality, reducing our subjective 
interpretation by as much as is humanly possible, ideally to zero. Yeah, or, or refining the subjective model so that it better and better predicts the objective reality, even though it will never be the objective reality. It, it's a highly effective predictive you know, apparatus. This is Star Talk.